Aurora is in the forecast with an Earth-directed stealthy solar storm and a massive coronal hole that's going to send us some fast solar wind. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week has definitely calmed down compared to last week, but we still have storming in store. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we haven't had as many big solar flares this week as we had last week, but we do still have a lot of solar storms being launched. In fact, we've had a lot of them near the east and the west limbs and at high latitudes. None of these have been Earth-directed. They may graze Earth a little bit, but most of them have been missing. However, back on the 20th, if you take a look with near that big coronal hole just to the west of it, you can see this puff. Well, that, believe it or not, is a stealthy solar storm. It is Earth-directed. However, it's been extremely hard to see this in coronagraphs. In fact, when we take a look at the coronagraphs, you can see all these kind of partial halos everywhere. But look inside this one halo right about 5 o'clock. You can see that outline there. That is the Earth-directed solar storm that is a halo. Sadly, with all of this mess and jumble, none of the agencies got it, so we don't have a solar storm model. However, looking at the speed of this structure, it looks like this thing's going to hit maybe late on the 23rd or into the 24th, and it's going to not be a big impact. However, with all of these other solar storms that are being launched and that fast solar wind from this big coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, we could start seeing storming around around the 24th into the 25th and possibly into the 26th with some of these other grazing solar storms that we've been seeing before things calm down. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you definitely could get a show. Aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, it's kind of a touch and go to see whether or not we could, but things might dip into mid latitudes for a little while. Meanwhile, most eyes have been on regions 32, 56, and 57. These are the regions that back on the sun's far side launched that huge, uh, almost Carrington-class solar storm and had that big radiation storm and it got everybody so scared. But don't worry about it. And now that these regions have rotated Earth side, we take a look, meh, they're hardly even big flare players anymore. So we can finally exhale. Don't worry about it. There is no kill shot. Please don't say that anymore because everything is absolutely fine and we don't have to worry about things. We are going to be watching for other regions that are going to rotate into Earth view, but things right now are still pretty good. Now, as we take a look at our far-sighted sun, this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. You can see that massive coronal hole. That should That's the same one that's going to be giving us some fast solar wind here in the next couple days. That should orient you. And you look to the sun's east slim. There are a couple new regions that look like they're going to be rotating into Stereo's view here over the next day or two, but they haven't been all that busy. Not since, you know, maybe about the 19th or 20th when they were actually launching big solar storms. So it does look like these regions are calming down and we won't have to worry about any scary looking things as they rotate into Earth view. However, they are going to continue boosting that solar flux. We're easily going to be back into the mid 150s, if not into the 160s here over this upcoming week, which means uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side is going to be stay in the good range. And it doesn't look necessarily right now that we're going to have any big risk for radio blackouts. So who knows, maybe over this next week, the bands are going to stay pretty pretty good and pretty quiet. And GPS operators, as long as you stay away from Aurora, you're going to be in great shape. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the 26th, the moon will only be about 25% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, now is a perfect chance to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have that Earth-directed stealthy solar storm that's on its way to Earth. 
And that's going to be followed by some fast solar wind from that massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. And this could make for a very interesting weekend. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. In fact, we have up to about an 85% chance of a major to a strong storm as we roll into Friday and in through the weekend. And this could easily last through the weekend and possibly into the early next week before things finally begin to calm down. Now, mid-latitudes, well, we're still expecting storming. In fact, we do expect minor storm conditions, but we have up to about a 20% chance of a major storm at mid-latitudes. And again, this is due to that fast solar wind, but remember, we do have that stealthy solar storm that could actually hit a little bit earlier than that. So we could see storming somewhere late on the 23rd and then into the 24th and possibly through the weekend before things calm down. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes or mid latitudes, you could be in for a show. And with some of these other glancing solar storm blows that we're getting, we could actually see storming continue through the beginning of next week and just kind of, you know, linger a little bit. Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. Well, you know, we don't have a lot of big flare players on the Earth facing disk. Things have quieted down quite a bit since last week. The nice thing is that the solar flux is still staying in about the mid 100s. We're sitting about the mid 150s right now, and things might kind of dip down a little bit before they. Uh, begin to rise again. And this is mainly due to the fact that we only have a couple big regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over the next uh, maybe week or so. And that's going to be keeping our radio blackout risk down pretty low. In fact, NOAA's only giving us about a 20% chance of an R1 to R2 radio blackout over the next couple days. In fact, we don't have any, really any risk at all for big X-class flares, which would be an R3 radio blackout. So uh, amateur radio operators on Earth's day side, you should expect really good radio propagation. We're only dealing with minor noise uh, issues this week. And GPS users, everything looks pretty good on Earth's day side. And now as we switch the radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, well, you know, we are still dealing with the lingering effects of that radiation storm from last week. Now, luckily, we're sitting well below the S1 radiation storm level, but we are still elevated, and that is keeping us in the D2 minor range, and we'll likely do that over the next couple days before things finally get back to completely quiet conditions. The nice thing is that we don't have any big flare players that are... So our risk for, radi for new radiation storms is really basically non-existent. So uh, airline passengers and high-risk high passengers and air crew, don't worry about it. It looks like everything is in the clear, and you won't be worrying about uh, getting extra dose of radiation over the next few days at least. So the space weather this week is reasonably exciting. We do have an Earth-directed stealthy solar storm that could be hitting us late on the 23rd and into the 24th, and that's going to be followed very quickly by some fast solar wind from that massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone. This means that Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you're definitely going to get a show over the next few days. But if you're Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, things are a little bit dicier. You're likely going to get a show when that fast solar wind hits, but that stealthy solar storm may kick off the fun a little bit early. So definitely stay kind of attuned to things right around the 24th, because that's where things could slowly begin to ramp up. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, propagation is looking pretty good for you on Earth's day side. We don't have any risk for big radio blackouts, and that should make you quite happy. But we do have the chance for that solar storming on Earth's night side. So just be aware you could have issues uh, over the next couple days, and you're just going to have to wait for things to calm down. And now, uh, GPS users, well, you know, again, radio blackouts are not really a big issue for you on Earth's day side. But when that storming begins to start, you know, the areas near dawn and near dusk can be a bit dicey. And also anywhere near Aurora, that could cause problems for your GPS reception. And if you are a drone pilot, remember to calibrate your magnetometers often, because that can also be an issue during solar storms. I'm Tamara the Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.